from PRX. Uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, friends everywhere. Whether friends, or fr you know, I'm not normal. I, I, I can be a friend, but I'm not more normally super friendly. If you have anyone super friendly living within you, uh, that's great. Uh, like, uh, I'd like to learn more. Uh, is it was there's got to have been a hero called super friendly. Here's the thing. Here's another chance for uh, time travel, pointless time travel, another edition when I'm supposed to be setting up a sleep podcast. I think I've talked about this in other intros. There used to be a restaurant. It was similar to a diner and an ice cream parlor called Friendly's. There still are a few left in the United States, but um, here's the thing. Go back in time. Friendly's. Maybe maybe it could have gone a little smoother if you had, a, like, an, I mean, not animatronics, but you could. That'd be fun. I mean, you'd, you'd have me thinking about you at least more. But you could have, like, at least a, a mascot. Super friendly. Come on down to friendly. It could be an ice cream cone or a sundae, though that might be strange because then you say, or a shake. I mean, I don't know. They had shamrock shakes and stuff at the other place. Super friendly. This podcast really is, the heart of the show is being super friendly, even though I have trouble with friendliness. Because I'm really here to be your friend in the deep, dark night and keep you company. Welcome if you're new. This show does take some getting used to, clearly. And I'm sure it's a bit different than what you expected. But here's what I'm here to do. Take your mind off of stuff and keep you company while you fall asleep. Uh, so just give the show a few tries, see how it goes. If you already loathe the show, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there. But just to see how it goes, I'm just here to help. I'm just here to be, like, be a mild distraction in the deep, dark night, kind of like watching TV. Uh, like w where you say, what's the most boring, like what's a channel that's super boring, but not too boring? Like, uh, that's what I'd like to put on. Like, I'd like to listen to that in the other, like have it on in the other room. That's what sleep with me is. So I'm glad you're here. Structurally, what we got coming up, majority of people listen to this show, the ad supported show linearly. So that's what we've structured, stru structured the show around, but you could adjust. I'll explain that later in the intro. We've got support. So the show could be free paying for it's optional. Then there's a long meandering intro, which is meant to ease you into bedtime or help you get ready for bed to take your mind off of stuff, to kind of set the mood. And later on, it'll be our bedtime story. It'll be about a journey into the world of friends. I mean, that's what could be more sleepy than that. So that's the show. I'm really glad you came by to check it out. And uh, let's see how it goes. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for free twice a week. All right, everybody, you've probably been hearing me talk about the amazing stuff we got going at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, uh, you know, all the feeds uh, and particularly people have been interested in the story only feeds and then the, the ad free uh, feed uh, full episodes without the ads and the thank yous. But, you know, some people just aren't. I understand. Like, that's why we love making this ad supported show. But if you're looking for those story only episodes or you say, I'd prefer ad free experience, no supporters on no thank yous at the end but I just can't financially, I'm not in a position to support the podcast. Don't worry. We got you covered. You could sign up at our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You get your own special link and you share that link on social media or share it with people. And as people sign up to listen to the free podcast, you get credit and you can earn three months. You can earn six months. You can earn 12 months of ad-free episodes and story only episodes. And this is happening every single week. Uh, somebody is, is climbing up there and I've had uh, multiple views. People earn six months just in the past couple of weeks. And what's successful is just not spamming, just sharing what you love about the podcast. You got to share a few times, uh, like uh, how you found the podcast, what your favorite episodes are. People are making playlists on their different apps and sharing them if the app allows sharing playlists and then sharing their link with it and saying, hey, this is the podcast that helps me fall asleep. Hey, this is my favorite episode. So yeah, if you're looking for those story only shows or you prefer ad free experience, but you prefer to, uh, like just do a little uh, elbow greasing instead of paying for it. That's great. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. That's R-E-F-E-R. Sign up uh, and join all those people getting that sweet, sweet sleep with me plus. Uh, so uh, check it out. Uh, thanks, everybody. 
All right, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. This is one part of the podcast, and we need you to hear it's where I pop my peas. If you please, I thank the listeners who supported our sponsors because they know so many of you get so much out of this ad-supported feed that is free to everybody. So you might want to do two, like a finger clap along since you're maybe already in bed or winding down. And I want to thank Daryl. Daryl got those Sleep With Me branded sleep phones by using the code sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and using Sleep With Me at check. Out and I don't know which ones Daryl got, but uh, I know Daryl was excited uh, about having that Sleep With Me merch, that Sleep With Me swag, and the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, whichever version you get. So thank you, Daryl. All right, if you want to be on, if you want to hear, would would you love to hear your name here on uh, on on the uh, Sleepy Supporter Zone? Support a sponsor, take a free trial, take that Helix quiz, and then let the sponsor know about it. Tag them, tag me on social media is the best way because then they say, wow, people really love this podcast. Uh, we really do get a lot out of supporting sleep with me. It is important to people. That's what that's what your action does. And then they stick around and everybody gets to benefit by you. That's why I take the time to thank people and I do it in an excited way so I can be here for you for free. So yeah, yeah. tag the sponsor, tag me, fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Thanks everybody. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. Uh, there's links to resources Resources, including international resources that you could connect with, including right now. It's also about being a part of a community, being a part of positive change. It's not just saying Black Lives Matter. It's not just saying stop AAPA. It's not just saying support Ukraine. It's taking action, learning more, and then taking action. And you, if you listen to these, you know, I heard about uh, uh, Hand in Hand from RBG. Uh, it was one of her favorite charities. And it's never been a more important time to support organizations like Hand in Hand right now. You know, it started with only 50 children in 1998, and Hand in Hand now has six campuses and thousands of Jewish and Arab students. And Hand in Hand's uh, motto is, partnership is the only way forward. Together we learn, together we hurt, together we support. And you could support Hand in Hand. You could use the link in our resources or go to handinhandk12.org to support the work they're doing. Because if you're listening to this, you know how important that work is. Also, there's other organizations we're supporting in our show notes uh so use those links uh yeah uh, and be a part of let me know about it thank you so much uh oh mystery bard a lot of people work really hard on this show who are they it's posty poster song sounds like a near fall wrote the theme song edits episodes too. carl w the legend also edits episodes ashley kenny scotty jennifer runner, 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 runner. eric and the team let us down they're on the website i am the mystery bard i do I do commissions at JonathanMann.net I'll write a song for you Any reason at all You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance Rusty Biscuit, Lois, Anna, like banana Leah does the transcripts Thanks, Mr. Bart. Don't forget, we've launched Sleep With Me Plus by the time you're hearing this. And if you're not in a position to support the show you, and you don't want to miss out on Sleep With Me Plus and all has to offer, sign up for our referral program. And as you refer people to the program, you could get access to Sleep With Me Plus to add free episodes and story-only episodes. And you could do that at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. That's R-E-F-E-R, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, or use the link in our show notes. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it's a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake, uh, whether it's thoughts, you know, things you're thinking about, thoughts about the past, the present, the future. So thinking thoughts, thoughts, they could be feelings, anything emotionally coming up for you, like, you know, feelings that are there, uh, physical sensations, 
uh, changes in time, temperature, routine, travel. You could be going somewhere. You could be going through something. Maybe you work a different shift, so your sleep schedule is different than most people. Maybe you got something coming up. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you have guests. Whatever it is, the only reason I list all that stuff or go through it is so you know that uh, you're not alone in dealing with that. Uh, you know this is a place where you say, this is okay. You really are welcome here, and I want you to feel seen and welcomed in. I realize it's in a strange digital way, or maybe not strange, but uh, a digital way that doesn't totally make any sense. I mean, that's the whole sh- 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 like that's the whole thing about the show anyway. I wouldn't say shtick, but it really is this... Uh, digital genuineness and and, and and based in, I just want to say this too, imperfection and being lost. Uh, so I'm coming from the same level you are, uh, like a little bit in the fog. And the, 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 that's only to point out like at bedtime, I might not know exactly what's keeping you up or what you're struggling with or what you're dealing with or what you're going through or what's in your path. Uh, But I may be able to relate to some of the feelings. And even if I can't relate to how it feels, I know there's someone listening right now at this moment who can, who is leaning in right now, and they know how you feel. They've been there. There's enough people listening that that is true. And that they are saying, just like I'm going to say right now, yeah, you really deserve a good night's sleep. That really is tough. Uh, and I know how it feels, and it might not be me saying that. It might be somebody else saying that. But I, I, I have a general idea of how it feels. Not great. Uh, I mean, or you could be. It could be like uh, your birthday tomorrow, and you can't sleep because of that or something. That's cool too. I've been there. Maybe not on my birthday, but uh, other times. So um, that's one of the most important things about the show is just to let you know this show is here just so that you don't feel as alone. In the deep, dark night, you got other people there who are rooting for you, who are saying, hey, that's tough. And that's uh, the continuation of that point is that you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a bedtime you don't have to dread. You could look forward to or feel neutral about. And I really hope I can provide that for you, that I could be here and and take your mind off of stuff and keep you company. And, uh, yeah, like... uh, Like, so you get the rest you need so your life is more manageable. And then maybe eventually you start getting the rest you need on a regular basis. You get a good bedtime routine going and and you're out there flourishing. That means our world is a better place to be in. And that is important to me, that your world is better. Because the world needs you out there in small ways, uh, in medium medium way. You know, whatever way you want to be out there, uh, the world could use you, your world. Because we all are in this together. So those are the most important things to do. What I'll do here is I'll send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. Which means I'll go off topic. I'll get mixed up. I'll forget what I was talking about. Then I'll kind of go back. I'll say, wait a second, what was it talking about? I don't even remember. And then I'll just say, well, it reminds me of this. And and there's plenty of pregnant pauses and filler words because I'm not the kind of person that gets straight to the point. And that's what works about this show is that uh, I'm here to meander you into bedtime like a Sunday drive. And so this isn't so much a podcast you listen to, but that you kind of barely hear. You know, just like if you're on a Sunday, Sunday drive used to be a thing. Um. I don't know if it always happened on Sundays. Also, if you were a kid, you didn't, like, here, here's the thing. I don't know, like, talk about something that actually is bathed in nostalgia. Sunday drives. Here's the positive, like, here's the positive things of drives with my family that I do remember in a positive way. Um, maybe something was on the radio. It could have been, um, it would have usually been an NPR station, so it could have been, um, Prairie Home Companion, maybe rerun a fresh air. Uh, sometimes it would be other shows uh, later in life. It would be Barbara Bud as it happens. That, but, like, uh, like, so there's, like, an audio aspect to it for me. And then there was this aspect of not totally being, like, to being a little bit tuned out. Maybe I'm looking out the window. Maybe I'm barely paying attention to what's happening. 
and I'm kind of moving. I don't know what, like, but that wasn't always the case. It's just kind of, so that's my bathed in nostalgia Sunday drive. You're kind of looking out the window. I think another benefit is that there's no exact destination in mind. I mean, Sunday drives really are full of pointless meanders. And uh, I got big into doing those, not on Sundays, but like um, on vacations uh, with my mom and my daughter. And you say, okay, and my mom's a bit, she says, just turn here and we'll see uh, where we go. So I don't know, like, um, what was my point in there? Oh, it's a podcast you just barely listen to. I don't. I think that's kind of like a, a long-winded apt, but apt metaphor. It's like a TV on in the other room. Or a friend talking to you, but they don't expect you to listen because they're here to just keep you coming and take your mind off. Stuff. And I'm not even here to put you to sleep. There's a reason the shows are over an hour. There's no pressure at all to fall asleep with this podcast. I'm here to keep you company first, to, to take your mind off of stuff first, to be your friend, your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your neighbor, your boars, your boar bee. Your boar bra, your boy cuz, your boar sip, whatever it is, uh, I'm here to keep you company, uh, and um, it just just uh, just uh, like in case you can't sleep at all, or you're having a stressful day, or you're listening and you're sound asleep. I'm here to keep you company either way, but I'll be here to the very end, so you don't got to worry about falling asleep. I'll be here to keep you company to the very end. It's something I learned very early on in the podcast. That's one of my more important jobs. I'm just here to be here keeping you company. You, that's right. Yeah, I'm here for you in, in, in this way. In, in this way. This is the only way I know how to do it. Um, so you don't really listen to the show. doesn't put you to sleep. What else? Oh, most people don't like it when they get here. They may be skeptical or doubtful. It takes two or three tries to get used to the show for most people. Because it doesn't meet many expectations. It's, uh, it's different. And most of the time, I don't know, there's something participatory about sleep stuff. Or that's why I started making sleep with me. Or that's expectation laden. Just for me. Talk about, I project things onto uh, sleep audio when I was, for most of my life, until I started making this show. But yeah, um, just see how it goes. I mean, that's what, I'm not exaggerating. Probably over a million people have said that. Like, at first I couldn't stand the show. I mean, there's m m probably at least 100 people that support the podcast financially that have said to me over the years, I listened to the podcast four years ago, and it was like the worst thing I ever heard in my life, uh, and I did not like you. And then I, you know, realized I only listened once and four years later I was, I had this thing come up or here's, you know, the journey I'm on in my life. And I checked it out again and I realized, oh, on the second or third try after the first try years and years ago, oh, okay, this is what I was looking for. It just wasn't something you can find most places because it's, I didn't realize I was looking for it because it's, uh, it's hard to explain. So all I say is see how it goes. I mean, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. And that's why I have sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you up. But don't, you know, don't leave too early either. Just see what happens. Because the very worst thing is like I could be, I could barely entertain you and you could hear some of my uh, bare, bare, barely humorous quibbles or whatever. And then you'll hear part of a story about friends going on a journey into the world of friends. Okay, so what else? Structure of the show really th throws people off. Uh, and I guess I understand it. One, if you got here new, you have expectations. And the idea that sleep, like sleep with me feels like a service, uh, an individual service. And that's kind of the, the style and, and, and the intent of the show. But we can, like, realistically, you know, that has its limitations. And so we put the show out and we've designed the structure with that in mind, that it kind of is used as a personal service and how, how we've learned on feedback over to benefit over the years, I'll kind of explain the structure and how you could alter it, but it's just not infinitely alterable. Um, you know, we got to keep making it, the show's got to be sustainable. So show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I say something quippy maybe. And that's you feel seen and welcomed. And you say, oh, I might check this show out. Or if you're a regular listener, you say, oh, there goes Scoots again with a qu quip attempt. Uh, he, uh, it's more like a, a, a peak or whatever quip is backwards, a cube. 
So um, that part, just you say, okay, I'll, 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 I'll take a look over here. Then there's support because most people enjoy the ad supported version of the show and they enjoy listening to it linearly. Uh, cause that way you don't have to pay for the podcast, right? So there's the support, but then there's the intro after the support, which is separate from the support. And the intro is meant to ease you into bedtime, not to put you to sleep. And, and um, and I realize there is a percentage of people that fall asleep during the intro. And there's a percentage of people that say, oh yeah, I'm going to fall asleep. So I'm going to skip ahead to start the show 20 or 30 minutes. But for most people, the intro serves as a wind down. And that's just what I've learned works, not just for me personally, but what a, a lot of the sleep stuff out there says, hey, you have a wind down routine. Why not have a, a strange little podcast intro as part of your wind down routine? Whether you're getting ready for bed, you're doing some chill activity, you know, you're foam rolling, you're stretching, you're draw, drawing, you're doing some sort of uh, yarn or uh, thread based activity. You're looking out the window, you're petting your pets, whatever it is as you wind down. Or you could be in bed getting comfortable, you're getting ready to drift off. But the intro is a slow, like uh, a buffer period, I'd say. Then there's support, and then it'll be our bedtime story. Now, if you prefer an ad-free version of the show because you listen all night or you just don't like the ads, you could get it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, or if, if you say, well, I can't afford to support the show directly for ad freeze, you can sign up for our referral program, uh, sleepingpodcast.com slash refer. So you do have options, but this is just what works for most people. So, and, and again, like you could listen to story only for, there's a lot of ways to alter the podcast, but I'm just here doing the best we have of what we've learned over the past 10 years of the way, what works for most people and how to adjust it. So, yeah, you could start the show 20 minutes or 30 minutes. You could download the podcast and take out the ads or something if you want. But just see how it goes at first if you're new. Because I have that same part of me that's like, wow, like, I don't like this, like, uh, whatever, like, this structure part. Like, uh, maybe that part of you is just trying to keep you up, you know? I mean, that's been the case in my life. Uh, So just see how it goes. But that's why we structure the show the way we structure it. It ends with some thank yous and good nights. And I think that's it. I'm really glad you're here. I really hope this podcast can help and become part of your routine. Because, again, that's just what's worked for me and for a lot of listeners. I mean, I just got back in a foam rolling. I took, like, in my sleep. I'm not kidding. I'm like, is that one of the things that well, I haven't been sleeping great? I get back in a foam rolling as part of my bedtime routine? We'll see. So I'm always trying to. So I'm really glad you're here. I work really hard. So do a team of people because we yearn and strive and we really hope we can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Most of you aren't just listening right now. You're driving, cleaning, and even exercising. But what if you could be saving money by switching to Progressive? Drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. And auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Multitask right now. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12 12 month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody, this is Scoots. Welcome to a Journey into the World of Friends, our ongoing episodically modular series. I believe this is a. Uh, episode 12, uh, and, uh, we did have also a bonus episode, but that makes it episode 12, 12, and then we'll have episode 14, uh, look, very convenient, right? Maybe, I don't know if we'll have, I don't, I don't know about the next episode, but, uh, it's just, I'm always trying to figure my way around these things, you know, steer clear of uh, those numbers. Uh, but so, uh, if you're new, don't worry. The reason when I say episodically modular, it means you can listen to it in any order. And even if this is your first episode, it'll be like, there's 11 prequels plus a holiday prequel or like a jump back episodes. And, uh, uh, then, um, 
Now I'm distracted because my brain's thinking of a. Me- it's interrupting me with a metaphor about what I'm saying. So I'll go on. I'll get back. I'll, I'll, but so you could listen to these in any order. You could listen to this one first, and then because the characters will catch you up on what's happening. My brain said just like the books were reading, because I'm reading a book by Stephon King. Uh, uh, just to keep it sleepy. Uh, his book is called The Obscured Tower with Not a Lot of Light. It's a, it's a, Some people would consider it a series of books, but when you read it from Stefan's perspective, uh, it's uh, one story or one book. And book four, which is maybe my favorite, thus far my favorite, is, uh, is it book four? <laughs> my brain's like, I think it's book three, dude. No, I think it's book four, six, five, six, seven, right, are, are next. Uh, but book four is mostly, uh, I, I, prequel's not the right thing, because I think that's, like, but it's, uh, it's uh, whatever, previously in the life of Roland, it doesn't start like that, but it, it could. That sounds like, uh, or the, like the beginning of a TV show Lost. Was that Titus Welliver that would say that? Previously in the life of Roland, uh, but it's a great story. And, and but I, what my example thinking was like, you could read. I I, uh, I was out to dinner with somebody, and I said, "Have you read those books?" And they said, "I don't know. I think I may." Have read I said, "You could read the fourth one, I think, and then read the other ones." I mean, not that's not a suggestion, but just a, a possibility. But I was also so like I was in like in the throes of well, like a book love affair because I was almost done with it when I was out to dinner, because this was last week. I actually finished the book last night, and I said, God, read this, man. Uh, so anyway, uh, you can listen to these episodes in any order. If you're new, T- this is the one TM where you say, that was the most boring TMI I've ever heard in my life. Uh, you just TMI'd me with, uh, and I'd say, right, it's a sleep podcast. Uh, finally, I got TMI right. TMT, too many tangents. You can't have that uh, with sleep with me. I mean, you can because uh, I got to get back to the story. Also, may, was I buying time for our Hollywood announcer or was I using the time of our Hollywood announcer? He would shrug and smile because he is so gracious. Uh, those kind of words, time has no meaning. Uh, cause time slows down when he's here. It's our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, as the friends behind the binary is the ladies, the gentlemen, the boys and girls. It's time to journey into this world of friends. Yeah. Yippee. Hey. Time with you is time well spent. Wow. Uh, thanks Antonio. Nothing could be truer except for a little addendum, which is like, uh, if you can be still for the next hour and 10 minutes, then it'll be time well spent. Otherwise, it'll be an hour and 40 minutes interspersed by me sighing and using strong language when I hear your steely jaw creak. Uh, Not that your jaw is creaking. I think the earth is creaking. Like, the earth shifts. When they say the earth moves under your feet, like... uh, the, uh, I, I, you, there may be a planetary, can a planet have a somatic response? I mean, I know a uh, Krakoa could have, uh, but, um, is am I pronouncing that right? Or am I mixing up uh, Araco and Krakoa? He doesn't even know what I'm talking about, but, uh, obsc- more obscure reference within an obscure reference. Uh, but if the planet, you know, maybe there's a planet on Starfield that has a somat- the somatic planet, uh, if you landed on that planet, I mean, it wouldn't be, somatic responses can be positive, right? Like the earth is like more shifting in, in pleasure, but it's not good. The, the thing is, that's fine outside of recording a sleep podcast, but I can't have planetary pleasure, planet, pleasure, pro, bl- pleasurable planetary shifts that are some sort of planetary somatic response to your jaw or your eyes or your presence uh, while I'm recording. So if you could just keep your, you know, your graciousness under control, then it'll be time well spent. Otherwise, it'll be, I mean, for you, the planet, everybody else in existence, sure, time well spent. But for me, you know, it'll, it'll get my gravy, as they say. I don't know if anybody says it. Do they say get my gravy? Oh, you, he just said it. You, can you say that? I'm, 
You want me to go get you some gravy? No, that was me pretending to be Antonio because he's already lying down. He has a full... So we had to get rid of the Tyvek suit because it made too much noise. So he is in like this... Um, like I got this extra large onesie for him to put on over his clothes, which... And, and don't worry... Well, I don't have any open wind. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to mind. Uh, and then I say, okay, don't move. Just don't move. That's how much Mr. Antonio Banderas loves you listeners and putting you to sleep. Uh, he's even smiling like while he's doing it. He, he, it's cute. You talk, I mean, I can't, you know, because of privacy concerns and our contractual obligations and imagination stuff. Uh, it's very cute though. He's lying on a bed with his hands, like, on his, like, belly, like, clasped, uh, looks very relaxed. I could not be relaxed in that state, but I expect, you know, of course, my, I expect him to be, because that's just how I roll. Uh, uh, so anyway, welcome to talk about a journey into the world of friends. We've journeyed to somewhere else, uh, but he shows friendship, uh, planetary and otherwise. It is time well spent with friends here on Journey into the World of Friends. Okay, so wh um, what just happened? I'm kind of, uh, I know we rested. This is uh, Wada speaking, and um, I think we just got to figure out, can we just go over everything and then figure out what we're going to do? Oh, I should go over everything. Okay, so this is M. Wada, the wizard of our party. Oh man, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm feeling weary. Um, why am I weary? Well, I'm a member of a party of adventurers. I'm here with, uh, Zell, working class warrior, um, M. Wada, I'm a wizard. Uh, we have, uh, our Florencian nurse, Eleanor. We have, uh, Lord Von Chill, Hardy, your gracing. He's a lord that leaps, uh, not very high. But uh, he could leap if he needed. To. He'll leap into action. He leaps with his mouth. He leaps with his mouth, uh, and he doesn't look. Uh, Lord Von Chill. I'm just kidding, Lord Von Chill. And of course, uh, a fleet of foot, uh, nimble of finger, dexterity is their thing. Locks uh, don't stand a chance, and neither do surprises at the hands of uh, Granada of Darmok. And we're here. Uh, in the holiday hut or the holiday lodge, and we just witnessed. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, back up. Thank you, thank you, Lord Von Chill. That was that was useful, actually. You're right. Okay, we started this adventure in a, another world, our world, but somehow we've entered the world of the game uh, we were designing or the campaign we were designing. In the, in the world of the before the before time, in our world. So is that time travel? I don't know if we're in, anyway, I don't, I don't know. So maybe I shouldn't go talk about stuff I don't understand. But basically, I, mean, I was with a group of friends, um, and we decided to uh, rekindle our friendship over a game uh, that would have had a DM, but we didn't have a DM because, you know, some people don't like to just be DM and try to play the campaign or always be DM and always be expected to prepare for something. Didn't realize this was deep inside me. Speaking on behalf of DMs uh, or like person, game administrator, we'll say. So we didn't have a DM. We just had five party members, uh, which in the past we only had four party members. Now we have five which is great. Uh, really, I'm not being uh, uh, like, uh, I'm glad you're here, Granada. So we decided in the absence of a DM to design our own campaign into uh, the land of leisure, which in the before the before time was a theme park, right? Oh, wait, are we three befores? Then the after time. Anyway, it, once upon a time, it was a theme park called the land of leisure in the state of Florida which is the state of the sun. It then, you know, after the first before time, I think, then the uh, theme park, you know, closed down uh, because of, plan, you know, stuff going on and was forgotten about. 
so after it was forgotten about for a while is when our adventure takes place. We had already gone on an adventure into the world of tomorrow, journey into land of tomorrow, which was a campaign we played, but we didn't design. So we decided we would create a campaign based on some brainstorming and no bad ideas. And we would go into an attraction called the journey into the world of friends. Uh, and we started out like most adventurers do in a town, a town esque, uh, where we gathered, you know, rumors and motivations and supplies. And, you know, then we stood at the threshold, and uh, there was actually guardians of the threshold. I didn't even think about that unintentionally. And then we entered the attraction and the adventure. And at some point, uh, things have been fuzzy the whole time. But at some point, we awoke within the, the attraction we were in the game, in the adventure we were playing. And we'll just have to roll with it at this point, that we're actually really here. And we had met Mary Bear, who seemed to be the leader. Oh, also this attraction, if you're not a history major, this attraction had come to life. All of the beings in the attraction had gained sentience or received sentience from a well of of a, a well of a spiritual nature that's connected to another world or could be a portal into another world a well of a spiritual nature beyond our grasp it was the same issue in our written adventure but now it's a real thing it has both good and not so good parts the well was under uh the ground and covered in water and somehow water and good, good spiritual natures have kept the non, most of the non-good spiritual natures uh, caught in the well or kind of uh, submerged or something. And this well was maybe a thing of legend, but, uh, you know, we, what we were here for was uh, different than just the well. We were here to stop Vidul, who was the son of the Baron of the Boyle. Uh, and actually we didn't even, we didn't even know that. I think at the time, all we knew is that the free flow of water for Florida had been, uh, upset. And we were here to establish the free flow of water because the Baron of the Boyle, the leader of Florida had, you know, tasked us with this. Of course, we all had other motivations and stuff like that, but uh, those obviously have gone by the wayside for the most part, unless somebody's going to do a last minute, uh, at friendship change, but I don't think that would be appropriate for this story, by uh, campaign, by the way. Okay, so uh, we've thought, okay, we're going to go into this attraction. Well, we, we had a couple options. We could start a countdown that would flood the entire land of leisure and establish the, like, it would get rid of all the water control mechanisms, some of which are mechanical and powered by the ocean. So they kind of seem to always work, or for the most part. But we said we could get rid of all that stuff, and then the water would just flow naturally. The downside would be the whole park would be flooded. But if we could just stop a Vidul or whoever is controlling the water... Uh, we could do that. Also, the Baron of the Boyle's son was also in the park uh, and was in a party of adventurers before us. So we said, okay, we'll help the Baron of the Boyle's son establish the free, free flow of water either by using these uh, mechanical tools uh, to flood the whole park or stop the leader, who is Vidul, a uh, cool-blooded... A uh, dragon, um, hum, 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 like, like I don't know, like a dragon-based being, but um, like a similar to a ma biped mammal, magic user, very powerful, very tricky, and that was our goal, and to have fun and adventure in our own friendship. Uh, so we met Mary Bear, who seems to be a leader of the attraction. Oh, because because of the well. Some, like, the well gives localized sentience to the uh, beings within the attraction. Most of this, or almost everything we've met, all the sentient beings, friends, we call them, because uh, this ride was once a boat ride through friendship around the world. And uh, so all the friends, kind of plushies uh, or stuffies, uh, came to life uh, and they're, they're nice. And actually, they, they only want kind of a peaceful means of existence and um, dancing and singing and stuff. So uh, 
So once we met them, it kind of became not all of us agreed. We said we can't just flood the whole park because they can't leave their attraction. If they're covered in green goop, they could go outside for a few minutes, uh, but then they have to come back inside. And if you needed me to explain to you in a different way, it's like kind of like if you, instead of going to the big farm, you ended up in a well, which was like a temporary zone. Sounds like some. this is only our theory or my theory. And that temporary zone, which is the well, maybe it's clogged or something. I don't know. So then, and this would an answer a lot of questions from our world, like real uh, uh, theological questions from our world. But so the well, if it's clogged or something, then the um, instead of going to the big farm, you end up as Mary Bear, like a, a bear, a bear plushie with an attraction in the world of friends. Uh, after that, we're not really sure. But what we did find out was that uh, Vidul was also working or serving a mist dragon from the not-so-nice part of that big farm temporary transfer area who has big plans and is in a hurry. Uh, so we still don't know. Like, so we do know, we don't know everything, but we know, we suspect that they're trying to get to free the well and then take over our, our this world and probably our world too because it seems to have a lot of power in it because it's got stored up uh, spiritual essences. Uh, and I think that's everything. It doesn't, I mean, so right. So where we are right now at this moment is, one, we came to the friends to say, hey, could you create a distraction and help us stop the duel? And they said, well, we're, all, we're friends, so we can't really do any offensive maneuvering. And we've become friends with a lot of the duel's uh, employees, so we're not so sure about that. And we said, oh, boy. And then while we were trying to figure that out, we took a break because we were trying to do only bad ideas. And the dragon and Vidul appeared, and Mary Bear had increased efficiency for everyone. But the dragon seems to be in a... Vidul was already seemed to be in a hurry. The dragon seems to be more in a hurry. And uh, the dragon said, I don't care about efficiency. Work, if you're more efficient, that means more work should be getting done. And then the dragon seemed to relocate or absorb uh, Mary Bear's uh, essence of spiritual being. Uh, we're not sure what happened after that, other than that Mary Bear's uh, plushie is inoperable. Then the dragon and Vidul disappeared, and uh, recently Mary Bear's, uh, like Vidul's, uh, like there was a disagreement, but it was resolved peacefully between Mary, like uh, Vidul's uh, team and um, the friends. And the, the Vidul said, don't worry, I, I need to take Mary Bear for a little while. So, like, uh, we, I mean, we got, we, we still got to stop. So here's what, and now I'm talking it out uh, with everybody and you're listening. So here's the thing. Vidul still thinks we're stuck in the security room, probably, right? I mean, I think there's a 99.9% .9 chance of that. And maybe, like, uh, who knows, like our spiritual beings and stuff. Um, we know Vidul and the dragon are both in a hurry. We don't know why. And we know we got to do something, right? I think that's everything. Uh, so, I mean, I think we got to figure out the why. Like, uh, maybe no, we don't have to figure out the whys. We have advantages. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what the next step is. Does anybody have uh, anything else to add? Uh, okay, uh, Eleanor. I mean, I think um, I've been focused on sending comforting uh, energy to the uh, everybody in here. So I wasn't listening really, but, uh, um, we can't, we can't let this, uh, like the toys are, the friends are wondering if, uh, like now they're concerned. So actually they are working at a higher rate, uh, because, uh, it, you know, they don't want to be absorbed by a, a mist dragon either. And uh, Zell, go ahead. Yeah, Zell, this is Zell. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's one motivation I share is we're here now, we've journeyed into the world of friends, right? We need to be friends for the friends. But also, we don't have to be, 
I mean, our, we don't have, we're not plush based beings, right? So I don't have a soft, I mean, I, I have my own softness, but I don't have to be soft about what happened about Mary Bear. And I could see Lord Von Chill and Granada and even Eleanor and Uwada and nodding along. Um, so I am extra motivated and maybe in a way the friends wouldn't agree with, but this is personal now because I liked Mary Bear. She was our friend. I like saying Mary Bear repair, and I liked the whole metaphor about the power of Greece or whatever that was. So, I, I like, uh, like, I don't know what we should do. Um, I mean, I know if I was leading, I would probably rush in. So let's just um, remove me. Uh, Granada, go ahead. Yeah, so this is Granada of Darmok, and... Uh, you know, I've said to myself, you know, there's a lot of things I've said to myself uh, in past times, you know, uh, Shaka when the walls fell, arm, you know, Temba, arms open wide and, and many other things. But uh, I agree. I'm feeling the same way the rest of our party's feeling. But I'm wondering if, yeah, softer touch at first is, so I think we need to learn more. What if we, like... Uh, I've been following the kind of construction. I think we could get from this, since we're up high, I think if the duel's not actively looking for us, uh, that we could probably find, like, we know where the duel's, like, offices. Why don't you just follow me and we'll head there now and listen in on the duel. Uh, like, just follow, yeah, we're going this way. It's not that far. And, yeah, I think if we just go over this way, and, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're uh, communicating quiet. Wait a second. Uh, I think, yeah, if we just get through this vent here. Yeah, now, uh, this is a, this one's still constructed. This is a, used to be for airflow. And there's v Vidul down. Is Vidul, is Vidul singing down there? This is Wada. So I have a sound block. So we could talk at, at a normal indoor voice uh, without Vidul here. Vidul is singing. And we're able to kind of talk and listen at the same time as a part of what I cast. Is is the, what's going on with the Baron of the Boil Sun down there? Uh, this is El, I, I see the Baron of the Boil Sun's in a deep sleep. I think it's a reaction. This is Eleanor. I think it's a reaction to this song. Is this song about the geology of Florida? Like it's some sort of. Is this one of those songs you're making it up? Like Vidul singing. This is a made-up song. Oh, my gosh. It's pretty good. It is long, though. It's one of those ongoing songs about, uh, the, it is about the geology of Florida and what's under the ground, what's under the ground and all around. So, okay, wait a second. What's that jar over there full of mist, uh? This is L. I, that looks a little bit like, like an outline of Mary Bear, uh. Okay, so there's like it's glowing green though. Okay, Vidul. Okay, wait, wait a second. Vidul's talk. Vidul seems to be laughing with confidence. Okay, this is a Wada. So Vidul's laying out. Okay, so Vidul's planning on fooling the dragon. Vidul's putting something green and glowing into Mary Bear too. I mean, not the jar, Mary Bear. The ba the the plushy friend, stuffy Mary Bear. Okay, why? I don't know. Okay, so hold on. Okay, I'm listening to the song and breaking it down. Okay, so Vidul has started the countdown to flood the park. So this was like, is that a red herring? Like, so Vidul is planning on keeping some of the locks. Uh, okay, so the Vidul and the dragon had planned on freeing Okay, see that down there? That's actually a scale model of what Vidul is working on. That's what Vidul... So, um, uh, see how that one lock is in... That, like, controls the water flow. But Vidul's relocated the water. So instead of the whole park flooding, just the area around the well is going to flood. Um, once that lock is down... But because of the new construction that Vidul and the dragon have been doing. So then the uh, well will be uncovered, but the water will still flow, obviously, because then Vidul can control the water flow and the dragon, so they'll still have power over the rest of Florida. 
It's Florida. Okay, thanks, Florida. And but what the dragon doesn't know is that Vidul will still be able to control that other. So Vidul could also flood the well. So Vidul's going to somehow. Okay, okay, this is the other part. That's part of the song now. The dragon will be in the bear, and the bear will be over there, but Vidul won't really care because the power will be Vidul's to bear. So Vidul will kind of, uh, I say, so I think if I'm following this, the dragon, I still understand why the dragon's time pressure is, but Vidul's time pressure is that the countdown has begun. So pretty soon the park would flood unless all this construction's done. So I guess that makes sense for the dragon too, because otherwise then the, uh, the well would be permanently underwater. But what Vidul's going to do is somehow get the dragon, catch the dragon. So, oh, okay, so this is, okay, so my memories now, I don't know. There's something about it. But so somehow Vidul's going to get the dragon into Mary Bear over there. Um, so this is like a double cross. So Vid Vidul's going to double cross the dragon. I guess that's some relief if Vidul's successful. Should we help Vidul? Like, what's the bad idea? What's our bad idea feel? This is, I don't know if I could help Vidul. This is Lord Von Chill. I've kept quiet just because I'm thinking about Mary Bear down there. And uh, I don't like Vidul sing. I, well, I do like, I don't like that I like Vidul singing. But I think this is good. We're learning this. Uh, I mean, I get the sense uh, we're better than Vidul. I mean, I think everybody agrees. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I don't just mean because of that I'm Lord Von Chill, you know, but, but, but that, uh, so I don't think I could work with Vidul, but we may be able to, uh, wait a second, something's happening, Wada. Uh, the dragon's coming in. Okay, so the dragon is now not happy with Vidul because of timing again. So again, this is, we must be close on the, oh yeah, we don't have much time at all. There's the dragons pointing to the rune-based clock. So yeah, we do not have much time left. Uh, Vidul saying, don't worry. And the dragon saying, you know, so the dragon, I mean, okay, so now I'm getting a sense. Okay, so it's very, so somehow it is, uh, my theory of clogged is not correct. I don't totally understand everything the dragon's saying. But basically, whatever the, whatever's going on with this well or portal, it might be fixed. Not only, like, I think it's on a different time scale than we're on. But again, if they get water on top of it, uh, the dragon's like... Uh, well, one, I think the dragon's expending, like all of the spiritual beings in there that are not nice are expending all their energy and effort to make the dragon appear in this world, like all their magic or whatever. So this is like their last gasp attempt, at least in this part of the long time that they're in. And the thought is that whatever the block, if that thing is blocked or something, that then it'll be repaired. And then they'll just go to whatever big farm so they're almost like in a transitory state. I mean, I think I already said this. Uh, so the dragon's very concerned. So, okay, so it's kind of like a transit station where there's no trains coming, but more people keep coming into the station. Somehow, uh, like, uh, there's also positive and non-positive beings in there. Maybe they're kind of separated by, like, oil and water. Yeah. But not oil and water, because in this case, so two different like uh, densities of oil, and the water's on top. Uh, oh, who would have known? Positive beings and uh, like non-positive. I mean, I guess this is just a theory. Okay, but yeah, that uh, so they're in a transitory state, and they're supposed to catch a train metaphorically to you know not the big farm in the sky. The positive beings are going to go to the big farm in the sky. Though some of them have been transitioning. Oh, so this is like energy theory too. No energy can go anywhere. It just can transfer. Okay, so, yeah, so the dragon. Okay, let me see if I could sum this up because it is very confusing. You can see all your faces. So this makes sense. 
Okay, so so maybe they caused the clog. I don't know that part, but okay. So basically, this should be just in the in the past, but this isn't a hu- human past. This is like a history of the like existence past. Uh, so it's on a different time scale. This would have been a place of transition. I don't know if people spent time there or is just literally a tube that is clogged, a tube station, and. I don't, I don't know, are two different tube stations that are on top of one another going in two different directions? I guess so, because if you go to, like, London or whatever, you say, okay, that station, and then go down to the next station. But then right now the flow has been paused, whatever, train delays. But for an eternity, a train delay can be pretty long if it's delayed. Uh, and somehow they figured out that they could get out. Maybe some of them leaked out, kind of like in our adventure. And maybe they have magical energy. Somehow they got this dragon out or the dragon is a representative of them. Meanwhile, the, the top station, so both these stations are underwater, which is kind of keeping, keeping it from just popping out. Again, I think this goes back to the geology thing. So the good, good, big farm bound people are on top, uh, and they've been trickling out because maybe the geology, I guess, what is it like, uh, dissolved limestone? Is that what, and, and something porous limestone, that was something that, uh, Vidul is thinking about. Oh, cause Vidul's going to also cut. Co- okay. All right. So Vidul has longer term plans to seal up the limestone. But anyway, not important right now. That's future plans that were in the song. Okay, but so, yeah, this is like they're trying to get out of their tube station into our to this world that we're in and our world, and transfer their energy here, um, and uh, get away basically. And and then like uh, it sounds like they're pretty powerful. So maybe they're not even from Earth. Uh, I don't know. That's bit like, because uh, I mean, I don't like. How is Mary Bear one size? Oh boy! Wait a second. Now the uh, the dragon seems to be absorbing the bear. Okay. Um. So I just saw that. Uh. So Baron of Boyle's son, who does did seem to be best friends with Vidul and siblings or half siblings, or whatever foundling siblings, the Baron of the Boyle. Son has now joined uh, the, the the dragon, uh, like Mary Bear did. Oh, but somehow Mary Bear's in that jar now. Uh, but the dragon seems to be planning on leaving. Oh, the dragon doesn't see the jar. Well, Vidul's been standing in front of it the whole time. Okay, interesting stuff here. But the dragon's going off, basically said, hurry up, and this is like an ultimatum now. Like, I, I can absorb you next, Vidul. Okay, now Vidul's not happy. Okay, so Vidul's got another one of those gems, and I just realized that that is an ancient thing called Barum's Gem. And it just clicked for me because it's green. And basically... Not the same Barum. You guys may be remembering a Barum, a different Barum. You're not rem- No one's following me. Great. No one in our party is following me. Basically, they're they're spiritual magnets or spiritual based being magnets. So the one in the jar is magnetized to Mary Bear. Now, Vidul is putting one in that. Um, there's a, that's another. It's not a plushy or a stuffy, but it's from the attraction. And it doesn't seem to be operating, but, but Baron of the Boyle is putting a gem in that um, thing with large shoes, a, a face paint, red nose, uh, holding balloons. And, oh, yeah, you're pulling the Baron of the Boyles uh, into the, the um, large shoe-based being. And it has a squirting flower. Okay, so I'm pretty sure what's happened is that... Uh, 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 like, uh, everybody follows me, right? So, no. Okay. Go ahead, Granada. Okay. So I, I'm following 10% of what you're saying, but I think the important 10%. So those gems are important and they pull being, so, so what the Vidul is planning is pulling the, the drag on into Mary bear. Like that was in the song. 
like, uh, and then Vidul will be totally in charge. Mary Bear's in that jar. I don't know what Vidul has planned, but maybe to keep everybody work, like, uh, like that would be good to keep the friends working with Vidul long term if Vidul has long term plans. And Vidul is, uh, a little bit unhappy, but the Baron of the Boyle, because the Baron of the Boyle is now, uh, um, smaller animatronic, uh, Vidul has to carry it. It's somewhat cute seeing, uh, a cool blooded based, uh, being holding a, uh, I mean, it looks like a doll almost. And they're going off, uh, maybe Vidul is going to go put, put, put the Baron of the Boyle, I don't know. Oh, because probably like wants to be in a hot air balloon. Because isn't that where they were in the original attraction when we were looking at those pictures and we were learning the song? Anyway, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to grab some rope and assume I'm, I, I, no, I'm not going to assume anything. I just rolled 20s. Uh, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to get the jar of Mary Bear and the gems. Um, because the, the Vidul put a gem into uh, Mary Bear, uh, and uh, so I'll get that gem. I'll get Mary Bear, and then um, what, does anybody have anything? Wait a second. Or does anybody have? Okay, like we'll put this green gem in there, and we need like a mist-filled jar or something. We'll just take it, and then we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll figure out working with Vidul. Maybe Vidul will get. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna, I'll am i be back. Okay, there she goes. This is Mwada. Granada's down. Granada's got the gem from inside of the Mary Bear stuffy. And almost, oh boy, almost dropped the jar with Mary Bear. Okay, now coming back up. Okay, Granada's back. Uh, and so now what do we do? We have a, jo- we have a ge- magnetic gem... We have a jar with Mary Bear's a spiritual being in there and a gem. Oh, he grabbed another gem. So you have two, th- we have three gems? Okay. Huh, I wonder if that's Vidul's gem. Like, do, do, like, I think you have to make some sort of uh, connection so it magnetizes to the right spirit. It, yeah, like, remember, like, uh, Dustbusters. It's like Dustbusters, but uh, specifically targeted Dustbustering. That movie, I'm not afraid of any uh, spiritual-based beings, just spiritual-based b- mist uh, at all. That was that. Remember that? Anybody else remember that movie? It was from the before, before time. They had a song about it. Uh, like uh, that was just, that was the saying. I'm not afraid of any ba- spiritual-based beings, mist-based being, being of beingness, or something like that. So okay. So now what are we gonna go ahead, uh, Eleanor? Okay, so I, I'm concerned because I'm feeling like uh, uh, something's come up for me. We start. I, I've got that same feeling. We had superior motivations. I still feel like our motivations are superior because we're gonna. Um, and I feel like it's we have a clear path to victory. But one thing is missing, which is that we we told that security bot we would let it out. Uh, we would come back to the security room. And, um, I just can't stop thinking about it. If we're really friends, um, we could do that. And we got to do something with this Mary Bear. So I think we need to go. I know this is the worst time to go to the security room. But otherwise, we're not really friends. Does anybody else have an opinion about that? Uh, this is what I think that's... I mean, I think with only bad ideas uh, being proven to be good, that that's not a bad idea either. You're right. We're, we've got to be friends to security bot, but also let's go. I'm following Granada's already on the way. Mary Bear can, I wonder if Mary Bear can hear me. The thing I'm thinking is that, uh, um, yeah, we could use the security bot's help because uh, the security bot is friends with Mary Bear. And, wow, we're already here. Granada, you are fast. Uh, oh, time. Okay. And the security bot's opening the door. It sees, and no, oh, it repaired one of the other security bots, but it's still not, it's repairing it. Uh, here's a wild idea. What if we put Mary Bear's gem 
in that other security box. There's number five. That's number 11. So let's just see what happens. Uh, okay. So, Mary Bear, if you could hear us, we're going to open your jar and put your um, gem in the security bot. And then you'll be Mary Bear bot, rep, bot, bot, rep, bot repaired by no, number number 11. That's number five. Okay, I'm going to put the gem in here. Mary Bear? Oh, Mary Bear's... Com okay, they can only communicate by humming, I guess. Uh, okay, hi, Mary Bear. Okay, Mary Bear hummed back. Okay. Oh, that is that thank you? Or... I don't... Okay. Mary Bear, why don't you um back and forth for um yes and spin one direction for no? Would you say one direction? That was a band. Oh, which direction? Uh, clock uh, clockwise for no, 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 not counter counterclockwise would be I don't know I, I don't understand. Back and forth, yes. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Funny. So that must be Mary Bear. Okay. So Mary Bear, hey, were you following everything for the most part, other than when it was confusing? Yes. Okay. So uh, number five is also very invested. Number five must be alive in that case. Number five, are you alive? You're be You're not a, um just a robot anymore. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Even if, if you're just a ro robot, that's fine. But you really were helpful to us. Oh, you, okay. And it, like, it's really hard to understand humor with humming robots who, where it's easier, where the humming isn't clear. And then you're trying to do punchlines because you're, you're a tread-based being. And then you're moving on your treads, and then you're trying to make a joke when we can only d d d delineate yes, no, or I don't understand. Okay, that I guess that's probably hilarious in any other situation. But we also have a clicking, click ticking clock to uh, come up with a plan to double cross the duel and the dragon. Okay. Oh, you guys are bumping against this thing. Oh, okay, because this is where all the blueprints are. Okay, so, okay, thank you, Mary Bear. Okay, so Mary Bear's pointing to stuff. Uh, okay, so if I make some changes here. Okay, so, yeah, we could draw. Okay, wow, that's a laser. You, you can write with a laser. Okay, could have just written stuff. Okay, okay, so that's Vidul's plan. Thank you, Mary Bear. Wait, look at these larger canals, because uh, this is where the water's going to be released. Like, those are the, like, all the areas of water's being held that would flood the park, right? But Vadul has put these, like, uh, blocks on those so that the park won't flood. But the park also had, those are, like, also extra canals. Like, see, on the other sides of the park, um, and through the middle of the park in case there was, like, in the past, if there was going to be flooding. So if we could, like, uh, I'm just thinking, like, uh, if water is somehow a preventative measure, like, maybe we, like, do the water around those. Uh, like, Mary Bear, do you think you could... um like, uh, is there anything in this room between the two of you? Like, could, could you, do, is there, okay, yes. Uh, so maybe we could use those canals. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, we need to reestablish the free flow water. But I'm just thinking if we could surround the park with water, like basically permanently cut it off uh, or make it much harder to get here because there'll already be more swamps uh, surrounding the park after this. But then we could also shift the water flow and it would basically uh, further cut the park off and hopefully this growth would happen and then cover the well. So we just have to like permanently... Like, as long as we, like, I think that would alleviate the pressure. And then we could just, like, uh, like permanently open that thing that Vadul's planning on controlling. 
but that'll be easy because what we could do is, um, uh, like do the gem switcheroo, right? Uh, we, we could get, so we'll take this jar back. Uh, oh, Granada's, you're already doing it. Uh, oh, cause it, we, okay. That, yeah, that looks like Mary Bear's still in there. Okay. Fake jar. Okay. Those are like, yeah, those are nice that they have art supplies here in this office and the storage. Okay, so Granada, you're going to do that and come back. Okay. So we'll just do this gem switcheroo. I don't know what we'll do. We'll have to come up with a plan, but I think we can double cross. Like, uh, well, I mean, there's no way the dragon trusts Vidul, right? So if we can figure out what the dragon's going to do to trick Vidul, then we could do that. And then we can. Um, so let's go. But I think if we can get the dragon, so that gem is ar like like already ready. I just have to uh, like activate it. So we could just wait and then get the dragon in something other than uh, Mary Bear. Mary Bear, we may not be able to get you in there. Now, Mary Bear, how would you feel if we, you know, like dealt with Vidul in a way where Vidul was, because uh, this must be Vidul's gem. Or if not, I could align this gem to resonate with Vidul. We could put Vidul in your body, Mary Bear. No, definitely not. That's a definite no. Okay. All right. Oh, Granada's back. So as of now, Vidul thinks everything's going to go smooth. We just have to figure out what the dragon's going to do. But I think we can anticipate that uh, the dragon's going to try to stop the duel somehow, too. Probably by switching the gem, maybe? I don't know. Maybe we should rest. You're right. Uh, let's rest. And I think we've got this. Uh, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, yeah, because we have the dragon's gem and Vidul's gem now. So we just got to do this and it'll be done. We'll be done soon. Uh, this is great. Uh, I think we can rest well, and I'm glad we came back uh, to show our friendship to number five. Uh, and now our new, new friend, Mary Bear, number 11, Mary Bear. Good night, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently to support the show directly. Couldn't do without these people. I want to thank uh, Lilia, Jamie, and Angie. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Susie Q, Audrey, and Zarin. Uh, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Isabella, Pixie, and Ben. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. A.B., Kim, and Anissa. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Pete, Lori, and Michael. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Heidi, Chris, and Lena. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. D, Sarah, and Delilah. Thanks, thanks, and good night. And Dawson. Uh, I don't know if that's Dawson from Dawson's Creek, but uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the show directly or supporting the sponsors, however you support the show. Great way to support the show for free is spreading the word, uh, letting people know about the show. You can also get rewarded. You could earn ad-free episodes by signing up for our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. So do that and you'll get rewarded too uh, for what you're already doing. Uh, thanks. Thanks and good night, everybody. Hey, everybody. This is Scoots. Just wanted to talk you in. You probably heard me talking about Sleep With Me Plus. It's based on how you listen to the show and 10 years of feedback. So we have a podcast with ad-free uh, episodes without the supporter zone, without the thank yous at the end. We have a podcast with story-only episodes, no music at all. We have another podcast, depending on the tier, that has all intro episodes and on extra-long compilations uh, of uh, themed episodes like TNG or Great British Bake Off, or some of our stories. And then we have a bonus feed full of bonus content. And you could get a seven-day free trial by signing up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. And uh, if you're not in a position financially to support the show, totally understand that. We've got our referral program. If people are earning uh, six months of ad-free and story-only episodes. Uh, we've had a couple of people earn three months, and I'm sure they're working their way to six months. I haven't checked today. 
And you could sign up for that, and you just have to share your link with people. It's uh, sleepinmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. And you just have to refer them to the free podcast. Uh, if they uh, subscribe to the free podcast in a free podcast app, uh, you'll get credit. And, yeah, as you uh, bring people in, three people, get you three months of ad-free story-only episodes, six people, six months. Uh, so uh, get over there and sign up for one of those uh, as I tuck you in. Thanks.